Hello and welcome back and that is right it is data news of the week the video where we cover all the different news stories that have happened this week involving data that we can squeeze into any other video. So straight up this week OWC for those of you that aren't aware big kind of Mac influence company out there um, they have premiered their new PCIe SSD card. Now, say it's a PCIe SSD card, that's a little bit of a change that it's actually an adapter card that can inhabit eight PCIe Gen 4 SSDs. That is right. The Excelsior 8M2 card, um, this is their PCIe Gen 4 times 16 upgrade card that has four PCIe Gen 4 times 4 M2 NVMe slots on board. And again, this is a big, big, big deal for several reasons. First and foremost, this is a card that allows you to store up to 64 terabytes of storage, which is enormous. And that isn't just 64 terabytes of traditional storage, that is 64 terabytes of PCIe Gen 4 storage, allowing you to have up to a reported 26,000 megabytes per second, 26 gigabytes of sequential read. That's insane on this card. Now bear in mind, this card is not a, a does, is not purchased pre-populated. You can choose whichever SSDs you want, which is really pleasing to see. Because normally cards like this you get from like Intel and a lot of data center level stuff, they always force you to use their SSDs inside. So it's really nice that not only have you got this, and this is not dissimilar to that Sabrent Destroyer card that we talked about a while ago, that this plug and play card, which has got inbuilt RAID and controls on board with its own dedicated controller, will allow you to either steadily populate or fully populate a PCIe Gen 4x16 slot of your Mac or Windows machine with more and more SSDs and really ramp up performance. Particularly you 8K video editors out there that are dealing with RAW, this is a big, big, big deal and certainly something you might want to keep your eye on. Next up, a bit of a half story, and this is kind of the other half of a story that we talked about last week, namely those WD20TB drives. We talked about it last week, and indeed quite a few months ago when we were talking about the OptiNand series of large capacity drives from Western Digital. And last week we were talking a lot more about kind of the data center drive there, the Ultrastar, the HC560, which is a 20 terabyte nine platter with every platter with 2.2 terabytes of storage, hard drive and that hard drive taking advantage of OptiNand where it's an area of flash on this largely you know mechanical hard drive disk that is used to store some of that super important metadata and therefore allow that indexing and that background data to be supplied via the SAS connector there to the end machine alongside all that large amount of data. Now, the reason I say this is half a story is not only is that Ultrastar that we talked about last week now available, but they've added a new one there in the WD Gold series. That's right, the Gold, the enterprise grade server, kind of the NAS high end rack mount stuff there. This is a new 20 TB drive that's also taken advantage of the nine platter design and that OptiNand on board, which is really great to hear. Now, WD are doing a real strong kind of delivery on these 20 TB, so I do not think it will be long before we see a WD Red Pro variant of this 20 TB. And even though they already kind of supplied this to a lot of their kind of secret partners there in the background, uh, this is the first time end users have really been able to get their hands on it. And even though um, Seagate, you know, they're obviously their biggest competitor, have been rolling out 20TB privately to a lot of the high end users in the background at data center level, this is kind of the first most aggressive and ultimately world availability of 20TB drives. They have beat everyone to the punch there. But again, do look out for these 20 TBs and certainly a WD Red, no doubt coming very, very soon. Next up, something I've already talked about on the channel a few weeks ago, but kind of following up on that, namely those two brand new 12 base Synologies. They are now globally available, the DS3622XS Plus and the DS2422 Plus. These two um, 12 bay desktop um, Synology NASes are now available everywhere. They were kind of listed on a few Eastern websites and finally everyone can get hold of them. Now, of course, we're going to be doing a review definitely on the 362 too very, very soon. So do stay tuned for that. But for a number of you that have been looking at a great kind of power entry into the desktop tier from Synology, this is as good as it gets. These, I mean, le maybe less so the 2422 Plus, but certainly that 3622 XS Plus with two 10 GBE ports on board, Xeon based architecture there on a six core, you know, DDR4 ECC memory, 16 gig by default, 
PCI Gen 3 times 8 expandability. This is a beast of a NAS. Again, it does come with some pros and some cons that we're going to cover in a greater degree of detail in their respective reviews very, very soon. But still, nonetheless, I'm really glad that after a lot of time, a lot of us wondering when are the Western, Western, when are the Westerners going to get their hands on this hardware that it's finally dropped. Finally, over to Coaxia, where we finally seen formal release of the EM6 SSD series. For those of you that aren't aware, Coaxia, of course, released a lot of SSDs, a lot of enterprise SSDs. What makes these any way different? One simple fact. These are NVMe over Ethernet SSDs, more commonly known as e, uh, NVMe OF SSD. These are SSDs that are designed to completely remove any kind of bottleneck from the CPU or memory inside a server. Now, Coaxia kind of first revealed this around about 18 months ago, and in conjunction with a lot of the development from the company Marvell, they have started, you know, kind of formally announcing and releasing this series of SSDs. These are uh, two and a half inch SSDs that are built into a um, kind of directly interfaced into a PCB with its own internal network controller, and then outputs and interfaces to ethernet connectivity. Now, when these are put into an existing storage array, the result is that any drop in latency that a lot of people kind of at least acknowledge these days in a flash mounted server where things have to be passed through the main internal infrastructure, that CPU and the memory and stuff like that is now removed, thereby uh, decreasing latency substantially and allowing the full throughput of these SSDs in the SAN and indeed NAS environments where you have these large storage servers filled with NVMEs outputting and then ultimately having your overall performance chipped away at and then outputted via the ethernet that middle section now gone it is now going to push through that full performance and we're going to start seeing at least at the enterprise data center level true nvme performance on these flash servers here again i'm talking ai i'm talking physics engines i am talking databases spanning the millions if not billions of files they're going to be hugely beneficial of this now bear in mind what i've discussed here is a huge oversimplification and we're going to do uh, in early 2022 a full overview of this kind of technology because this is where data center storage is going to be in around two to two and a half years in terms of flash and i do look forward to talking about this in january because i think this is a subject that's getting nowhere near the coverage at the mid level that it should but this has been data news of the week now next week of course it's going to be the week of black friday which i'm aware is a misnomer of a statement i've ever said um all the way through the week i'm going to be trying to keep an eye on all of the different tech websites out there and if i see any decent deals that i personally would buy i'm going to be sort of doing what we did on prime day and black friday last year i'm going to make a little video every day about two three minutes long i'm just going to let you guys know the deals that i've seen online and we've got a whole page dedicated to it over on nas compares it should be linked below whether all the deals that me and eddie would personally buy we're chucking them all down there below the saving whether it's worth doing it that kind of stuff and again you can chuck your deals down there use them ignore them it's up to you but otherwise thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this if you have click subscribe and the bell to be notified on further data news of the week videos and otherwise i will see you next week